Welcome back to the Chem 111 lab video series. Today we're going to be discussing Experiment 5, Chemical Reactions. I'm Dahlia. And I'm Josh. And before we get started, let's do a safety check. Don't forget to wear your closed-toed shoes, your long pants, your lab coat, safety glasses, and today gloves are required. Let's get started. Today you'll be introduced to a variety of very cool chemical reactions. By carrying out these reactions yourself and observing what happens, you'll be able to propose reaction products. Simply compare the physical properties of the product that form to the compounds listed in Table 5-1. Bringing all of this together will result in your ability to write full balanced reaction equations. You'll perform a variety of reactions today that can be categorized into two main types, oxidation reduction or redox reactions and metathesis reactions. In our video today, we'll show some representative examples. We'll show two redox reactions, first reacting zinc with hydrochloric acid, and then we'll do potassium permanganate reaction with sodium oxalate. Then we'll show two metathesis reactions, one that forms a solid and one that forms a gas. For this lab, you will need your six inch test tubes from your drawer and the chemicals provided by your lab instructor. Make sure to perform each reaction done today in a clean six inch test tube. So first we're gonna add two mils of six molar hydrochloric acid you don't need to measure out this amount, just add two pipettefuls. Then just add a small piece of zinc to your hydrochloric acid and carefully watch what happens. Be sure to record all observations in your notebook. Based on what happened, what product formed? The reaction bubbled, meaning it produced a gas. Did the gas smell? To smell a gas, be sure to properly waft the fumes towards you. Never just stick your nose into the test tube. This could be very <coughs> dangerous. For our reaction, the gas was colorless and odorless, so the most likely product is hydrogen gas. This makes sense since this is a redox reaction. In these reactions, electron transfer takes place. So with this reaction, the zinc metal gave up electrons, changed oxidation state from 0 to plus 2, and formed zinc chloride. Meanwhile, the hydrogen in hydrochloric acid accepted the electrons, changed oxidation state from plus 1 to 0, and formed hydrogen gas. Thus, we say that the metal is oxidized and the hydrogen is reduced. Here's another redox reaction, this time with a well-known oxidant, potassium permanganate. First. We're adding one milliliter, just one pipette full, of 0.1 molar sodium oxalate. Now, we're adding 10 drops of 6 molar H2SO4. Lastly, here we add 2 drops of 0.1 molar potassium permanganate. If you refer to Table 5.1, you'll see that potassium permanganate is a maroon solution. As you'll see, while we add it, the mixture becomes purple. But over time with mixing, the manganese 2 chloride is a colorless or faint pink. In this redox reaction, the manganese accepted electrons and changed oxidation state from plus 7 to plus 2, resulting in a colorless or light pink solution. On to the metathesis reactions. First, we'll show one that forms a solid product. Thus, this is known as a precipitation reaction. We are adding 1 mL of 0.1 molar barium chloride to the tube, followed by 2 drops of 1 molar potassium chromate. We see a solid forms in the tube. What could that solid be? Refer to table 5.1. Could it be barium chromate? In metathesis reactions, cations and anions of the starting materials change partners. In this reaction, barium and potassium are the cations, while chloride and chromate are the anions. And when these exchange partners, you see we get potassium chloride and barium chromate, the yellow solid. For our last reaction, we'll do a metathesis reaction that forms a gas. Here we're in the hood and adding a small sample of solid sodium sulfite. And then we're adding a few drops of six molar HCl. You can tell by the bubbling that a gas is forming. Now what could this gas be? Our gas is colorless and has a choking odor, so don't forget to waft the gas towards you to smell it. 
If you refer once again to table 5.1, the most likely product is SO2 gas. Now how could that have formed? In this reaction, H plus and sodium are the cations, while chloride and sulfide are the anions. And when these exchange partners, one of the products is H2SO3. Well, in solution, this compound readily decomposes to H2O and SO2 gas. Have fun, Have fun this, this week! week. <laughs>